<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening where we're going to paint whoop, this guy up here, this uh, beautiful uh, Nautilus. Uh, I'm getting into talking about why I selected that maybe uh, a little bit later on, but let's go through a few of the materials that I'm using to get started with. Uh, the paper that I'm using is my Fabriano Studio uh, watercolor paper, 9 by 12 inches. The paints that I have over here on my right hand side are m -gram paints. And once again, I'll be using my uh, King Art paint brushes. Love these brushes. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what really has made me fall in love with these. Uh, but they're really wonderful brushes. I've got a number of different sizes, uh, 16, 12, 10, 8, uh, what's this one, 2, right, so we'll probably be using some or all of those in the course of uh, painting this guy, I've got my uh, Nautilus pre-drawn here, uh, Liza's here tonight, Natalie's here tonight, who else, there's, I see there are other people here, um, say hello, introduce yourself, we're all a friendly bunch here, we're all here to have a good time on a Wednesday, and thank you for joining me. Let's see. Tom is here. Welcome, Tom. Um, let's see. Uh, so here's here's my general plan for this Nautilus, and I hope you can all kind of see a vague outline here. Um, so this guy has, you know, three quarters of him here are his shell, where he's got these beautiful stripes on here. And I want to try to handle this really kind of wet in wet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wet that whole area and I'm gonna try to manipulate the paint on there while it's all wet. Uh, we'll do some shading on there. We'll do, um, you know, a variety of different colors on here. You'll kind of see where I'm going with this when we do that. And so I'm hoping that this larger area is going to have this watercolory washness to it, um, and it's still making you know the under area here darker, a few highlights, um, this area here, this area here where the light would be shining down, and then uh, I'm going to do, I don't know what this is, <laughs> it looks like a hat to me, on the top here. Um, in one piece, and that's going to be kind of a more traditional thing in my style. And then we'll we'll do all of these, I, I'm calling them tentacles, kind of individually, uh, but maybe with some, or, or maybe with some uh, negative painting between them. Maybe, you know, put on one layer of color and then some uh, negative painting uh, to, to really make them stand out. So we'll see how that all goes. Uh, the other thing I want to say is, that uh, picture makes this guy look really uh, ochery and brown. Maybe a little bit of orange thrown in there. And I don't really want to do that. Uh, the background that's there is really brown, dark brown. Uh, and I'm going to put more of a brighter blue background behind him. And so I want, I want to uh, have some of that blue reflected in uh, in this guy when I paint him. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Natalie, you're saying you're not sure what this piece up here is called. You'd call it a crown or a helmet. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure it's just the top of his head somehow, some way, something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll call it, we'll call it a, a hat or a crown. And I'm just going to jump right in and get started. Like I said, I'm going to just put on some clear water. Actually, I'm going to get an even larger brush than this. I'm going to put on some clear water to start with, and then we'll start playing with uh, some colors. And then as we are going through this, I'll tell you about what we have coming up in Discord. I'll tell you what I've been doing this past week, other than, other than trying to stay dry. It's pretty pretty wet here uh, if you can hear it uh, I'm the the garage my studio is in the garage uh, I 
And if I put my arm up like this, I'm about a foot away from the ceiling and there's no insulation there or anything. So uh, you're very likely to hear the rain. Um, it does get quite loud in here from time to time when it rains. I'm not exactly certain how much the microphone is going to pick up, but you can, <laughs> Eliza, you can hear it. <laughs> it's been coming in waves uh, here, so right now it seems to have subsided a little bit, but when you start to hear it, you'll really hear it. And there's nothing that can be done about it. It's just Mother Nature saying she wants to give us a little bit of water as a gift. And I think we all know I'm in California and we have we have had a drought going for the past oh seven or eight years. And so this year we've got quite a wet year. I'm not going to complain at all about the water. Or I should say I won't complain much. You can hear it, Natalie. You say you can hear it if you turn the the volume all the way up. It'll come in. I think you'll hear it when it really starts to, to rattle on here. I think you're going to be able to hear it. Let's see. I'm going to... I've got this blue already on here. This is mostly phthalo blue that's already on here. I said I wanted to um, reflect some of the blue from this... That's going to be in the surrounding water. Uh, on this guy and so I'm going to take some of this and just drop some of this blue on him here and there maybe a little bit more shoot we'll even grab some of this ultramarine uh, on the bottom down here actually wait, I want to get a little purple in here too I've got this a cobalt purple, which is a lovely color. I don't ever get to use it that often. So I'm going to drop some of this on here. And I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> I'm going to try really hard. I'm already trying not to monkey with this too much. Other than to get the colors on where I want them. Let me I'm going to get a little bit of this ochre. Here, and I'm going to drop just some lighter colors. Natalie, you're getting my California rain tomorrow. Good luck with it. <laughs> we're here, we're projected to get so it so it's projected to rain for six days straight or seven days straight here, and I think that they said. We're going to get between one, uh, one third and two inches of rain per day. So it's a maximum of what? 14 inches of rain? That's, that's a bit of rain. <laughs> that's more than, that's, uh, until last year, that's more than we'd had for almost a decade. Um, it's a lot of rain. <laughs> Sure, you got your own rain here. Um, <laughs> with your rain and with my rain, you're not going to hear anything. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. I'm sorry. Well, no, I'm not sorry. I rain, look, rain is good, right? We all can use a little rain. Helps to clean things. Helps to freshen things up. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sad about uh, any rain, for sure. I'm I'm happy that we're getting some rain. It's just it's just <laughs> it's just a lot. Let's see. We're um, <laughs> so, oh, that's a lot of rain for us. Natalie, you're saying that's a lot of rain for us. It is a lot of rain for us. Uh, last year, whoa, that's way too much. Last year we had all of our rain in basically two days. And I think in those two days, we had roughly 17 inches of rain. Uh, it was a massive amount, and everything flooded. It was, it was, it actually was pretty horrible. 
think I've talked about it on here before. I don't, I don't need to bring that back up. Uh, but it was a lot of rain, and it came down so fast and didn't have anywhere to go. It couldn't drain to the ocean. It couldn't. The rivers couldn't drain. It pushed everything. Uh, it pushed everything away uh, that was in the 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 rivers and creeks, and it was it got all jammed up behind the creeks, and then that caused flooding there. I don't know. It was it was a lot. Okay. Whoo! That is one long rambling uh, thought. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop right here. I've got some lovely soft colors on here. And I'm trying, I, I, what I want to do is to not overpower this because I want these colors to mingle and meld in here. And a lot of times if you get too much color in there, then you kind of feel like you should force it a little bit. And I don't want to do that, or I do anyways. So I've got a nice spot in here where I think the colors are blending in nicely. I've got a little puddle here. Just excuse me for one moment while I get that little puddle out before it makes a big cauliflower in there. Okay, done. Uh, plus, I've got some nice lighter areas in here and a few that are a little bit darker. We'll probably have to come back on a second layer and enhance some of that color, but I love the way this is starting out, right? I, I, this is, looks to me fantastic. Some lighter areas up here, I might even lighten up. I'm not going to do it right now because as soon as I touch my brush to it, as it's starting to dry, uh, we're going to have trouble. So I might lighten a little bit here. I might lighten a little bit here. Um... Or maybe I'll just darken around that and leave those lighter. I, I don't know. We'll figure that out. But I really like where this is going right now. Let's see. Jennifer H. is here. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome to the channel. Question. Since you're not using a block or taping the paper down, do you put weight on it uh, when finished uh, to touch up to ensure the paper doesn't buckle? Um, no, <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't have the problem of my paper buckling. So I, and I'll, and I'll show you, I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to grab a couple of paintings from right here. Here's one. And here are a couple of more. Okay. Whoop. Look at that. Um, so I'm going to push this aside, and here's one. I, I, I do this painting quite a lot. Uh, this is on, this is actually on Arches uh, hot press paper. I can tell by feeling it. And I know that all my paper that has deckled edges is Arches paper. Uh, the whole thing wet, and you can see almost no buckling, bending, uh, or anything of the sort. I, I I get my paper wet, but not necessarily wet enough to really um, buckle it. And if you can see on the back, there, I think you can see a couple of shadows. There are a couple of little areas here and there where it's just begun to do a little bit of buckle, but um, not much. Right? Um, almost the same. Whoop. Almost the same picture, a little larger scale. And the look on the back is probably the, well, I don't know if I can do it, but um, this had tape around it only so I got a hard edge. Um, same with this one. And almost, almost no buckling or warping on it. For whatever reason, um, I never get quite that much um, um, on it. And then this is this is one I did yesterday. Uh, trying a completely different style and the whole thing was wet at one point in time. Um, and you can see it sits pretty flat. You can see down at the bottom eh, it just lifts up a little bit, but I do have a I do have a painting on the other side of this also. So that's even on both sides. Um, and this is, this is me trying to loosen up a little bit. We've talked about 
painters or channels that we like on here. I like Tim Wilmot. Um, he he he's a very impressionistic painter, and I decided to take a crack at redoing one of his paintings, and this is what I came up with. Um, I have a hard time <laughs> with this kind of thing, but I thought it turned out pretty good. It's not too bad. Anyways, um, uh, Jennifer, I hope that answers your question. Um, there, there is definitely a tipping point for paper where it will, it will kind of, it'll bubble a little bit or it might buckle ever so slightly. And, and if you don't go over that, your paper is going to remain pretty flat. But once you go over that, it just, it goes. And then it's all over the place. Um, this one actually is just, as it's drying, there you can, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. You can just see it here. You can see the shape just out there. So that's that's going to buckle a little bit, but when this dries, it'll mostly sh dry or I'm flatten right back out. Um, let's see, Liza, keep going. Oh, keep <laughs> Liza, what do you mean? Keep going, doing that style of painting? Or you say keep going, showing other paintings that I have over there? <laughs> I don't know what you're, what the keep going is. Let's see. Um, Oh, Natalie, that's a great question. Jennifer, what weight paper are you using? All my paper is 140 pound paper. If you're using 90 or some places you can get 75, uh, yeah, you'll definitely notice some buckling on, on your paper, even with slightly uh, damp, only slightly damp stuff. Natalie, good call on that one. Um, and Liza, you want me to keep going with that style of painting. You know I have trouble with that style of painting. I'm using 140 pound, 100% cotton most of the time. Okay, great. Um, I was kind of surprised because it didn't consider, I didn't consider myself handed, handed, heavy handed with water. Did you guys see that? My lights just flickered. Um, Sherry, that painting was really good. Breakout. <laughs> uh, I will, if you guys want to see more of that, I, again, you know, not my, not really my style, but uh, I, I, I'm a big fan of that type of painting. I will try to do some more. I'll, I'll even try to do them here, if you'd like. See, I'm going to paint all of this because it's got this undertone on it. I'm going to paint all of this with some really light um, yellow ochre. And it's going to be super light. I might even throw in a little, a little brown or a little gray in here just to break the color up, but still very light color. That's going to be my base layer on here. I think my shell is quite dry enough. I don't have to worry about a run from one to the other. See, I've got all of this color just kind of in there. Let's see. You can iron the cotton paper. Use a towel. Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't thought. I haven't done that in a long time. You can. If you're, if you're done with your painting and it has buckled, I would suggest ironing it from the back side. But you're entirely right. I forgot all about that. It's a little trick. Spritz it with a little water on the back side. Run a warm, not hot iron over it, and it'll put it right back in order. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, Renee is here. Hello. Uh, let's see. Susie, I got it. It worked. Let's see. Uh, I just bought a full roll of Arches cold press. Wow. Sherry. Is that the, like, 
um, it's, it's 100 meters long or 100 yards long. Is it that one or is yours 30 meters? I did that at one point in time. I bought, I don't think it was, I don't think it was a roll of arches. What did I buy? Oh, I think I bought a roll of B paper. I think that's what I bought. Um, is that right? I know I bought a, a roll of B paper, but I bought a roll of something else. Also, how big is your roll? Mine was four feet wide. <laughs> it was massive. And I had to find a special paper cutter to try and cut it on because it was too big. <laughs> it was really big. Uh, luckily, I found one at work. Um, and the people were nice enough to let me use it for such. And then I had... And then I, I really did have wavy paper then. It had some, uh, it was hard to flatten out. I did have to uh, tape all of that down. Let's see. Yeah, Sherry, how big, how, yeah, what's, what, <laughs> what size is the roll of the paper that you bought? Inquiring minds need to know. Susie says, how do you handle the paper? Doesn't it want to roll up all the time? It does. I know it does. Mine did. Let's see. We got our Costco cash back rebate. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> you figure you got a lifetime supply. You might. That's fantastic, though. I'm glad you splurged and bought something cool for yourself. it up might be a bit of a trick though uh, <laughs> yes yeah, ex exactly Liza what a wonderful uh, investment in yourself okay I, this is just a mix of azo orange look I got to go through the colors in my head azo orange and uh, new gamboge so the azo orange is all by itself is a pretty stark color. I want to. I'm happy to tone it down a little bit with that gamboge. Ooh, look at that! So right in the center, right in the right. I want to say right on his neck over there. He's got that bright pop of of yellow orange right there. I want to. I want to keep that there. I think that's a cool feature. Yeah, I like that. We'll come back and do a little shading over top of that, but I really like that. Sudike is here. Hello. Sure, you guys. 45 by 10 yards. 45 inches by 10 yards. So four feet, almost four feet by 10 yards by 30 feet. Wow. That's massive. Holy cow. Uh, I, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> I really am. Let's see, I'm going to get a little bit of this purple and a little bit of Payne's Gray, and I'm going to use that as some eyeball color here. A little bit more purple than that. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's got this really um, strange... Um, eye color, but it's pretty cool too. And I want to try to do some justice to that. So it's it's a blue gray. I, I'm hoping that the Payne's gray will add a little bit of that color for us. But there we go. And again, I apologize for turning this around and turning this around. I'm doing everything with some light brush strokes here for the time being. Still wet, still wet, still wet. Everything is still damp. Okay, I've got nothing else. I have to. Uh, you tear the sheets with a deckle edge ruler. 
Uh, Susie, that, how do you, okay, I'm, I, I'm not, I've never even heard of a deckled edge ruler. Where do you get a deckled edge ruler? Can you buy that on Amazon or some such thing? And sure, you got a deckled edge ruler for Christmas. How, how, do, how, how do I not know these things? <laughs> My back. Can anybody hear me? Yo. Okay. Uh, I'm. I lost power, <laughs> but I'm back now. Um. <laughs> I apologize for that. Let's pick up where we were. Uh, before. Power was, power was totally out in the garage, the studio, black, uh, no power, no power, no power. Um, <laughs> the door to the studio was closed. I had to, I had to get out of, the, go around everything in my studio, go around everything in the, in the garage, go outside. Power's out, and power came back on. Oh, I'm just glad you all can hear me. Okay, and now we can continue on. All right, so where were we? Um, I have this shell that I want to do something with. It's pretty dry. It's not completely dry. That's okay. So I want to deepen and darken some of the color around the shell and just really add on those darks. Uh, to give this shell some texture so it's not just, you know, a flat surface. So that's what I'm aiming to do. I'm not necessarily aiming to make it a lot darker, uh, but it will have to get a little bit darker. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is wet the whole area that I'm going to work with. I might have some trouble with this purple because it's... Uh, so granulating it probably will want to lift off but I think we'll be able to deal with it and we'll just go from there so I'm curious I don't know how long I was off the air I'm going to guess a minute and a half two minutes maybe what <laughs> What did you guys see while I was off the air? What 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 happened? Did it just go black and and that was it? What what was the deal for you for you all? Because for me, for, for me it was just black. <laughs> it was nothing. And my first thought was, "Oh boy." <laughs> How do I even get out of the garage? Really, that was that was my first thought. How do I get out of here? Okay, I'm doing a slightly different purple because I think I can make it a slightly stronger mix. It froze on a frame. I was oh interesting. I just froze. Well, I just froze. That was probably the most interesting I've been all night. <laughs> it's just frozen. <laughs> I hope my mouth wasn't open or anything like that. I wasn't doing anything too silly. Just kind of frozen me. 
You saw the Tom. You saw the 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 hair dryer for quite a while. I guess I can totally understand that. Quite honestly. Oh, my screen went dead. My screen went black. Oh, that was weird. Um, yeah, I was... I was, <laughs> I was it says, I'm having a bad night. Um, yeah, really, it was, it was a little scary because uh, it, was, it was black. I don't have a cell phone with me. Unfortunately, I was in a rush uh, leaving... You know, my, my day job today, I left my phone at my desk at work, so I don't, I don't have a phone with me because the phone would typically have a flashlight. I, uh, shoot, I might have spent a little too, a little too much time on the bottom of this. We'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. A little bit of this purple just underneath here. A little bit. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Enough of the enough of the power outage. Nature's gonna do what what she's gonna do. And we'll we'll handle it as it comes up. Yeah, Natalie, you're surprised that the live stream stayed active and I didn't have to restart. I am too, uh, because I've had to do that before. I used to have much less stable internet uh, out here in the studio, and I had problems with it from time to time. And yeah, it would it would really kind of go, and once it was gone, it, there was not a reconnection uh, of anything really. Uh, oh, so this is starting to look like something here, right? Can you see some of the method of my madness here? Get this a little darker. A little darker. In here. You can see a little bit of the method of my madness. Um... That this is has some definition to it now. I probably should bring this up even further if I still have any dampness on here. See a little bit. We'll, we'll give it a try. Let's bring this up even further. I do this and let's give a little bit of a little bit of something right in through right in through here like that. I should get one of <laughs> who said that? Uh, Sherry, I should get one of those headlamps and <laughs> grab the lights. I <laughs> I have one of those. I have two of those actually. <laughs> oh, I love flashlights. Um, I'll make no uh, bones about that. I love flashlights and uh, the ability to have light wherever, whenever I want it. I do a lot uh, in the yard sometimes after dark. Um, I'll get out and, and move some things around, especially in the winter time. And if I go uh, uh, take a walk at night down to the water's edge or whatnot, sometimes I want to have my hands free. I can pick up rocks or, or whatnot, or whatever I find. And uh, having that headlight really is helpful. It really is. Um. We Sears have Dollar Tree better run on lights in every room. <laughs> That's the thing. We, <laughs> we, we have quite a few. Uh, I don't know if we have Dollar Tree lights. Um, 
Well, I think some of them are. We've started buying a few lights, too, at my house. And uh, I don't know where some of them are from. Parts unknown. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to leave the shell here to dry a little bit. I, I love the way this is going. I love the softness. You can see a little light here and a little light here. I don't, I'm hoping you can see what I'm talking about. Let me, let me use this as a pointer. Right here, you can see it looks like there's a little light, a little highlight there. Right in here and right along this area. And that's mostly because of this darker that goes along the edge here and that little dark spot right there. So really, we've got some coolness on this shell. And I think when we put the stripes on, the stripes are even going to enhance that even further. Okay, so now I'm going to move back over to all of the, the tentacles or the feelers or everything that's underneath um, his hat. <laughs> here but not his but not his eye and I'm gonna I'm gonna paint uh, these in a little bit right not a huge change in value not a huge change but a change nonetheless and the way I have this drawn his eyes gonna his eye will be a little bit different that's okay Here, I was going to say, I have a hair on my brush. Of course I have a hair on my brush. Lots of hair. I have a stray hair on my brush. That's what I should say. And I'm going to paint this whole area in here a little darker. That's going to come in like that. I'm going to keep with basically the same colors. And I'm going to... Go around his eye here. I'm not going to worry about where any of these arms or tentacles or or bits are at the moment. I want to go right around his eye, and I'm going to draw this out a little bit. Nice, beautiful, great, graduated wash here. Just pull this right on out. Lovely, lovely, lovely. It's got some dark areas. Come on, burnt umber. Give up your color. There we go. Okay, I see, I see there's something there. Just give me one second to finish what I'm doing here. Too light, too bright. Tone that down ever so slightly. Just a little bit of that blue. It's actually, I think in that little well here where I got this, I think that's thalo blue. Okay, all right, all right. And this is darker in there. Good, okay. <clears throat> all right, so I've just, I've, I've got... An outline on that eye where I like it. I'm just going to kind of keep going with this, and I think that'll make his eye stand out a little bit more. I can't even see, can't even see. Look what I did. That'll make his eye stand out a little bit. Maybe you're probably right. Probably needs to go just a little bit darker, not a lot. Probably does need to go a little darker. I'll do just that. That'll help it stand out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, I gave Hubby one for Christmas. He thought it was the same thing. He gave me three of them. <laughs> He's like me and has quite a collection of flashlights. I... <laughs> Uh, Eliza, you say it's starting to look good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a neck light used for crochet. Interesting. Oh, it's a bendable. Oh, that's so interesting. We have a puck LED light in strategic places. That's a great idea. 
Uh, let's see. My friend got a ski hat for her. Her husband had lights built into it. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> and Sherry, you say, this is a nice series of sea creatures. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's continue on with my nice series of sea creatures. Let's see if we can continue to make some nice sea creatures. I'm going to just dull this brown down. I'm using... Uh, this is just burnt umber here. <laughs> you only paint if the light is just right. I would never paint if I waited till the light was just right. How often does it get just right? I'm just curious. I want to paint outside all the time, but I won't paint if it's windy. How about that? I could easily clip my paper to a board. I have plenty of clips and boards and everything like that. I just don't I don't enjoy it. It's not it's not fun. It doesn't have anything to do with light. It's kind of the same of not wanting to do stuff when <laughs> it's not right. Renee, you're painting a sea turtle. Love sea turtles. I just came across an old sea turtle painting that I had done a number of years ago. Yours is probably going to turn out better than mine did. But they're wonderful creatures. Sea turtles. Let's see. Sudika, you have one flashlight. That's all you can keep track of. Oh, let's see, uh, about, five, let's see, I'm trying to think, five years ago, my family and I went on vacation, <laughs> my family and I, that sounds, that's a funny thing to say, um, we all went on vacation to Hawaii. I had never been to Hawaii. My wife had been there uh, several times. And we rented an Airbnb instead of getting a hotel room. We had an Airbnb on a, on a golf course. Um, basically, it was the same price and kind of a cooler place to be, whatnot. Um, and... I took four or five flashlights with me. My wife was like, why are you taking flashlights to Hawaii? Hawaii. This makes no sense to me. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You know, and they weren't, they weren't much. They're little dollar flashlights. I have several of them. <clears throat> Or had, I don't know, I'm not sure what has happened to too many of them, but I had several of them just laying around the house and whatnot. So I took them uh, with me, and we we got there, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm using these be, uh, at night. I'm going to take a walk on a golf course. It'll be nice and cool, right? Uh, take a nice walk. Who knows what we'll find. There's probably some cool stuff that comes out at night on the golf course. There is on the golf course uh, here in, in town here. And she's like, oh, I don't know about that. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. <clears throat> the first night, I went out on a walk on the golf course with my son, and we saw these giant toads <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, oh, my God, these things are massive. <clears throat> so we brought one. We caught one, of course. It was what we do. I'm a big kid. Right? He was a little kid, so of course, we're going to catch one. We took it back, and then um, <laughs> the first thing everybody did was they went, ooh, I want to go out on the golf course now. I want to check them out on the golf course now. So, luckily, we had enough flashlights that everybody could um, get out on the golf course and find some toads. That's my whole flashlight story. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh you guys have been chatting away, and I've been painting away. And talking about flashlights and chasing toads. I'm going to have to catch up here in just a second. Let's see. I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow in here. 
I'll even throw in a little bit of blue up in top up here if I can get to it before it stains. Something like something like this. more of this color, a little bit more of this color up here. Yep, covering up some of that blue and that's okay. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> Eliza, you say, wow, it's coming to life. He's kind of is coming to life. You know what really makes him come to life is all the negative painting down here, right? Because all of a sudden, all of those these three dimensional things start sticking out of out of there. Uh, so these really kind of make it come to life. Let's see. Uh, oh, do I want to do this? I was going to put some water drops on here. I'm not sure. I don't think I'm brave enough to do that tonight. I'm not quite brave enough to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to mix up some of this a nice kind of a soupy uh, a mix of, of burnt umber. I don't know if I could get the words out tonight. Um, and I'm going to start with some of the uh, stripes. And I'm going to start with a pretty um, standard mix, you know, pretty pure mix of burnt umber up here. And as we go down... Around the bottom, I'm going to start adding in some blue, which will gray it out a little bit. And so these ones will be a more muted color down here. These will be a little brighter at the top. Uh, and I think that that's going to help to bring even more life to the shell here, which is not quite dry yet. I'm afraid to turn <laughs> the... What's that thing called? Hair dryer on. Uh, but what I am going to do, uh, I'm going to give just a little bit of dark underneath, a little bit of blue underneath here. And just about like that. I, I want to want to denote that these are not one piece. are a couple of pieces here don't dry on me I know you're small well that's gonna to help to lift that off just just a little bit to lift that shell away from everything that's underneath there this could even probably go down a little further that's that's probably like that it'll help to push that out a little bit Yeah, I like he he does look like he's coming to life a little bit, doesn't he? Let's see. I just scrolled through eight years. Oh my god, Sherry, you just scrolled through eight years of my video. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to subject anybody to that. That's horrible. <laughs> So, DK, you started watching my uh, videos from the start. I, I do remember you having, you joined a few uh, early on live streams too, if I remember right. You've been you've been with me for quite a long time, as I recall. If my memory is serving me correctly. Wow. Can you guys hear? <laughs> Let's see. Tom, I used to uh, flashlight. Oh, oh, we're talking about what people used to ask for for kids, ask for, for Christmas. Uh, let's see. Mine all got, mine all got 
uh, flashlights for Christmas a couple of times. Let's see. At Renee, I followed your lead and posted my plein air painting from today in Discord. Oh, you did. And it was wonderful. A bright, sunny day in Arizona. <laughs> uh, Liza, you asked your dad for a desk in 1972. Oh, I have... Oh, I just... I grew up in the, I grew up in the in the country, right? Deep in the country, deep in the heart of the country, and we, when I was five or six, my my dad decided the best thing he could do was tear down half of the barn in our backyard. We had this giant um, dairy barn. We weren't dairy farmers, but we had this giant dairy barn in our backyard so he tore it down which today would be completely egregious right you just wouldn't do that but we used the wood to not only burn it to heat our house right but we made a whole bunch of furniture out of it and my dad made me a desk and I'm trying to hunt it down to see if it's still around so I can buy it. It was all hardwood maple, had a big flat top that you lifted up like this and had all the storage underneath. Oh, wonderful. So he built that for me in 1977, maybe 78, and I had it until I moved out of the house in 1988, and my mother sold it. She said she sold it for 20 bucks, which hurts even more. She sold it, and I've never seen it since. And every time I think about that desk, I'm like, why? But it was huge. <laughs> you hope I find that desk. Oh, it was... It, it, so you sat in it, and it was about three, three and a half feet wide, right? So a nice desk, not huge, but a nice desk. <clears throat> and the desktop sat on a platform that was angled down like this, right? You sat at the bottom here, and then you opened it up. And at the shallowest, it was about six inches deep. And then went to about 10 inches deep in the back and had a little ledge on the back. You could put pens or pencils or, you know, a drink or whatever up there. And then your feet, the, the hole, the area for your feet uh, went back a little ways. And then behind that, built into the sides of it, were uh, shelves, right? So down on the bottom, on the sides, were shelves. Boop, 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 boop. You could store whatever in there. Oh, I love that desk. <laughs> And like I said, it was even cooler. I mean, it probably wasn't so cool because of this at that point in time, but it is now because my dad made it uh, in his workshop in our basement. And um, not only that, but he made it from the wood from our barn. Uh, I hope, Susie, I hope somebody is using that desk and, and loves it to death. Had a lot of adventures, or I should say, I wrote a lot of adventure stories at that desk. I had some adventures on that desk. I had everything I could. I remember being able to store like all my belongings inside the desk <laughs> at some point in time. I was, and I was an old, looked like an old school desk. Well, all right, whatever. That's my desk story. <laughs> my mother says she claims to know who has it, but I have not seen hiding her hair of it. All right, all right. Um, have I stalled enough? Yeah, I think this is dry enough. We can start putting some stripes on now. Let's see. Um, let's see, so nobody's talking about painting this week, which is funny. <laughs> oh, no, that's not true. Natalie did. Natalie talked about the painting she did uh, earlier. 
which is in Discord if anybody wants to go and take a look at it. It's pretty good. I like it. And, and um, if, if nobody has tried it, I hope everybody tries. Uh, plein air painting. Uh, everybody should try it, but it is a different animal and it's difficult to do. You you don't have the the timing. You don't have the comfort level that you have at your desk or your table or in your studio or wherever you would normally paint. Right, everything happens, and it happens very quickly, seemingly, when you're out plein air painting. Plus, there's normally a crowd that gathers, or at least a few people that come by, and they want to talk to you. And you're going to talk to them. It just happens. And so you've got to find a way to talk to people without that uh, taking away from your painting because as soon as you start to talk and not paint then your paint is going to dry and you're going to have some uh, hard edges <laughs> whether you want them or not uh, but um, it is pretty fun it's pretty rewarding to do If you haven't done any plein air painting, um, give it a try. And also uh, give yourself credit for trying uh, because I guarantee it's not going to turn out like you think it's going to turn out the first time. <laughs> let's see, uh, Eliza. Let's see, the cherry wood is Amish. <laughs> Natalie, you try to paint loosely. When you're out uh, doing plein air painting, I, for whatever reason, um, I paint more loosely when I'm out plein air painting. Also, I think it's I think I can't say for certain, but I think part of it is that um, you feel as though you can't take quite as much time because the conditions are changing as you're painting you don't know what's going to happen 10 minutes from now you want to capture the light the way it looks at the moment you don't know if that light is going to uh, hang on or go away uh, there's just there's so many uh, different elements that you don't know uh, how to do it as <laughs> you can't paint loosely uh, you're too controlling. I bet you could. It's a different mindset. Um, it's a different mindset to try and paint loosely, and and not only that, it's it takes a, a different skill set. Um, right? You, you're if you if you paint tighter. Just expect yourself to go out and paint uh, and, and do a good, you know, loose or impressionist photo or anything. It's just not going to happen. Oh, look at this. Look how cool that's starting to look now. <laughs> I turned it around the right way and it's looking, look, it looks fantastic. Now you can really see the undertones under there. The purple is under here. The ochre that's under there. Oh, it's going to turn out great. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get too overly excited there. <laughs> Wait, we're talking fungus now? CBK, one time I was painting fungus at the base of a tree. That actually sounds pretty cool. People didn't talk to me. They just looked at me like it was weird. <laughs> I get it. I was... What was it two weeks ago or whatever it was? I wanted to go out and paint uh, plein air, and I did. I took my big headset, <laughs> so put this giant headset on, 
uh, some people gathered around me, and, but almost, almost nobody talked to me. They could see I had this giant headset on. I couldn't, I, I wasn't going to hear them if they said anything anyways. <laughs> Beatrix Potter, painter. Beatrix didn't paint her own, did she? I don't know. The painter of Beatrix Potter. Uh, Beatrix Potter of Peter Rabbit book fame. Love to paint mushrooms. Maybe she did. She really paint her own books. Beatrix Potter. That's fantastic. More power to her. I didn't know that. Multi talented then. Author and an illustrator, painter. I don't want to. I don't want to disparage her if she thinks illustrator is, is something less than a an artist. I, any other kind of artist. I don't I personally don't think it is, but love the Beatrix Potter books. It was so it was Beatrix Potter. She was a a, a wonderful artist. Fantastic. Wow. I I I I didn't know. I learned, so I learned. So, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys learn any watercolors from me. <laughs> the watercolors that you do learn, probably a little dubious, but I always learn so much from, uh, from you guys. Uh, when I do our Wednesday streams. I didn't know, or maybe I did, and I don't remember because I, I don't know if I. Everybody knows my wife is an actual artist. <laughs> I say an actual artist because she went to art school, and she's classically trained in many uh, disciplines. She doesn't do watercolors. She has, but she doesn't do them. She, she'll do oil or acrylic. She does sculpture. She does, um, well, she'll, she'll draw. She's much better at drawing than I am. But she gets mad when I say she's the, uh, <laughs> we're both artists. <laughs> she gets mad when I say uh, uh, she's the real artist in the family because she's had the schooling. I, I tell everybody, I, I just have fun painting. I really just try to enjoy it and have fun with it. And I think, right, that and a couple of techniques, uh, right? You can't, get, you can't go past that. But, um, you know, the enjoyment and knowing a few techniques really goes a long way. And you can, you can do a lot with a little. All right, I'm going to turn him and take a look. Ooh, look. He is looking good. Oh, he's coming to life. <laughs> I, I say surprisedly. <laughs> art comes from the heart. Thank you, Liza. It does. A lot of art comes from the heart. It just does. You don't have to have any super talent in any one area. It helps. But you don't have to have it. Um, you, what you do have to have is a, a desire to understand whatever your medium is and a willingness to um, have a little fun at your own misadventure because you're going to have some as you learn. Because it's, it's like learning a new language, right? Uh, and the language is... Pigment, water, and paper. And so if, if you are learning a, a vocal language and you mispronounced a few things or you got a few verb tenses out of, uh, out of sorts, you'd kind of laugh at yourself and go, oh, okay, All right, I'll, I'll do better next time. Same thing, with, same thing with watercolor painting, right? It's a different language. You got to learn a few of the steps, a few of the things that you might... Um, need to master everything once you get a few you can communicate effectively i.e 
can make some pretty nice artwork. And I'll get down off my high horse now. <laughs> oh, I can't tell you how good I think this looks. And I, I'm also going to tell you that before I started, I told myself, I actually don't, oh, I don't know where it's at. I actually painted one of these yesterday. Uh, before I painted that uh, Impressionist painting, um, I painted a Nautilus yesterday. And I I'll be honest, I hated it. <laughs> uh, but I knew I would do better today because I knew what I did badly yesterday. Um, I, I painted way too dark, way too early yesterday, and it just gave it a weird look to everything. But I thought the color scheme was right, just like I think the color scheme is right on here. Uh, and it made it look cool. I just didn't like it. So this one, this one I really do like. <laughs> I will be honest. I do like this one. I think this one is looking fantastic. Hope you all are liking the way this one looks. Uh, oh, and while I'm here, and while I'm thinking about it, and I don't know why it just came into uh, my mind. Oh, Sherry, you're starting to paint whimsically. I like that. I paint the real creature, and then I have fun with it. Okay, cool. <laughs> Misadventure is the word. Misadventure is the word. Uh, Misadventure is a fantastic word. Such a happy word misadventure let's have a misadventure um while i'm thinking of it and while i am looking at uh, the color purple here as i'm painting this i do want to let everybody know that and I, I think i announced it last week i'm sure i announced it last week reinstituted painting challenges and I started early with February but I guess given that tomorrow is uh, the first day of February we can all get started on it I I will on the last Wednesday of the month I will do my interpretation of the challenge uh, and everybody can see how I, how I, how, how I paint it, right? Um, take a look at it. You can see all the steps I do. And you'll also know then that the challenge isn't going to be so difficult that it's going to take forever to do. <laughs> I've been in a couple of challenges that have just taken uh, a long, long time to do because they went, oh, it's a challenge and... It should be hard because challenges are hard. I want the challenges to be fun. Um, and if you can get a little learning out of them, I think that's even even better. So the, the challenge for February is going to be amethyst, right? You can paint the amethyst crystal. You can paint an amethyst necklace. You can paint an amethyst ring. You can paint amethyst as the raw gemstone. Whatever you want. Um, but the, the challenge is Amethyst. It's the birthstone of February. And I will be painting an Amethyst ring on the, excuse me, the um, last Wednesday of February. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> like my whole life has been a misadventure. <laughs> I, if your whole life has been a misadventure, you've probably had an interesting life. Uh, I'm going to say it like that. But come on, misadventure is such a great word, is it not? <laughs> oh, Liza, your mama's birthday month. Fantastic. It's my daughter's birthday month also. 
He's somewhat excited about the challenge being Amethyst. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I paint. Uh, Liza, you paint best when your stressors are the greatest. Does that mean, you're going to have to explain what you mean there. Does that mean stressors from outside are the best and you just kind of fall into your painting and um, it helps you forget everything else? Or are you saying uh, you want challenges that are super hard because that super hardness will bring out the best in you? You can interpret that a number of different ways. So this guy's got, I don't actually know what this big purplish black stripe is that's here, but I'm going to give it to him. All right, I'm going to let him have his stripey area here. I don't want to take that away from this guy. Okay, okay. Uh, I, ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this guy. It helps you forget. There you go. There you go. I got it now. Second one, first one. You got stress on the outside. You can just really get into your painting and uh, forget about everything else. Just enjoy the process. painting too dark Michael come on oh too dark so this is just going to give me the opportunity to enhance some of this color here I'm still thinking about I'm still thinking about about dropping some salt on the top of this or maybe a few drops of water on the top of this <clears throat> just to just to give it a little bit of texture I think what I'd like to do is drop just a bit of salt on here. I don't usually use salt, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> One second. Oh. Where's my salt? I've lost my salt. Okay, no salt. I have to do a little drop of water. <laughs> drop of water. Here it goes. Drop, drop, drop. And let's let that bloom up and do what it's going to do. And that's going to give us our texture at the top. I do have to, because I want to be able to see that this is a shell on top. I'll put a little line right there. That helps to give that little bit of separation. Uh, let's see, Renee, you have literally never found a use for it. It was one of my first tubes of paint that I purchased. Wait a minute. Oh, Renee, you're saying it will give you a an excuse to use your Daniel Smith Amethyst colored paint. 
the paint you have never used before because you can't find a use for it. I'm glad I could find a use for your Daniel Smith paint. Oh, Liza, I would salt it, but I can't find my salt. That makes me so angry. Not angry, really. Disappointed, I guess. Is more what it is. I don't know where my, my salt for two years... At least I thought was on a shelf right, right over there. And uh, now I don't have any idea where my salt is. <laughs> I'm a little distressed about it. I so rarely use salt. I thought... Well, I didn't know if I wanted to do it. That was one of my thoughts. Like, I'm going to finally use some salt. Or drop some water on it. Depending upon how brave I was feeling. I guess the powers that be told me I'm only brave enough for a little water droplet. That's okay. I got I'm, I'm taking a little time because I, I got to get his eye right, right? Um, if with animals, I suppose with people too, but I don't really paint people. Um, but if you get the eye right, it makes it makes the painting, right? And if you get the eye wrong, it ruins the painting. And I don't want to get this guy's eye wrong because I think he's extremely cool looking. I want it to be right. I'm taking a little extra time. I've dropped down to this tiny little brush. This is a number two brush here. Small, small, tiny little brush. Too purple, too purple. Come on, more brown in there. There we go. I think he's looking pretty fantastic. I always feel, <laughs> sure. I'm being completely honest with you. I always feel a little funny saying stuff like that. He's looking fantastic. Well, I hope I say he's looking fantastic because I'm the one painting him, but I really do. I think he's looking great. I love his little tentacles out here. I want to I want to give a little bit more of some definition on a couple of these. Ah, oh, come on. Come on, King Art brushes. Don't let me down. Almost like a line underneath some of these just to give that little bit of definition, right? A little bit here, a little bit there. I don't need a ton of definition here, but I think a little bit is going to be in order. So that we can kind of tell how many are out here. If I just go underneath here a little bit, draw that out, and it can be almost nothing. Uh, it can be almost nothing if I if I do it right. <clears throat> Let's see. Soda light genuine, Renee. Renee, what is soda like genuine? Green appetite or appetite, however you say it. I have that. I know what that one is, but I have no idea what soda light um, soda light genuine is. 
Well, just tell us what what color family it's in. Is it a is it a green? Is it a blue? Is what what's the color family that that's in? Been doing a ten day drawing challenge with Danny Gregory from Sketchbook School. It is great fun. Okay, cool. A 10, 10 day, did you say 10 day? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. 10 day. Um, so, oh, Renee, it's gray with blue separation. That's the soda light. Okay. Sherry, your 10 day course. What kinds of things are you drawing in your 10 day course? I'm going to take notes in case I ever make my own 10-day course. No, I'm not. I will never do a drawing course. I might do a painting course, but I'll never do a drawing course. I'm just curious what kinds of things uh, you draw in a drawing course. Never having taken a drawing course before. I did, at one point in time, get invited by a bunch of old co-workers to um, travel down to Mexico on an urban sketching expedition, which I thought was going to be great fun, until it turned out I couldn't go. <laughs> It's not a course, it's just a challenge. Oh, okay, it's a challenge to draw something each day. Okay, cool. So, kind of like the um, Charlie O'Sullivan. Is it Charlie O'Sullivan? Charlie, his uh, World Watercolor Month challenge where you get a, get a thing to draw each day or paint each day. It's very loose. Last night I drew a... Five Canadian dollar bill. I drew my shoe, my bathroom stuff. Oh, interesting. Interesting. It actually sounds pretty cool. I hope you're. Uh, I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope, other than that, hope you get quite a lot out of it. Um, that's always the benefit when you do something like that. It's almost like doing a study of a whole bunch of different things, but. The fact that it forces you to, to sit down and do it oftentimes leads to wonderful results where you wouldn't necessarily um, take the time uh, or take as much time to do things on your own. You get involved in something like that and it forces you to do it. No, I don't like that. Like his eyeball. A little brown in there. Gonna put a highlight on it anyways. Okay, okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> I look at him and I and I I love the way he's looking. He really does uh, has kind of come to life, hasn't he? Um, okay, I said that I was going to put a background on this, and I'm going to do that now. I'm not using green. Let's just get green out of here. Um, I'm going to do my background again. I'm going to mix up some color first. Deep ocean, deep ocean. Cobalt, ultramarine. Maybe let's throw in some turquoise. Ooh, I love turquoise. I love, love, love turquoise. 
Actually, I love the combination of cobalt and turquoise together. I don't know why? But look at it. It's such a lovely color. Okay. Um, I am going to... I'm going to go this way with my colors. Right? Um, blue here and blue there across that way. I'm going to start over here first. I've got some clean water. Clean water. And let's put some... All in this corner. Get you nice and damp. I need a new paper towel. Ooh. All right, and our color here. I think that's a little bright. Drop a little neutral tint into it. It is deep down in the sea after all. Oh, am I doing this off screen? You guys can't even see. Somebody's got to yell at me. Who's got brush pens? Brush pens? You guys have all the cool stuff. I have a couple of brush pens. Who's uh, using the brush pens? Ooh, who's using the brush pens? Who, who's ever using the... Oh, there you go. Sherry. Um, the brush pens have been a game changer for you. So... Uh, here's my question. Are you using the brush pens by filling them with the color that you want to put on and you have one brush pen for each color? Or are you, um, uh, are you just using them as a water reservoir? Just curious. There's no right and wrong answer. I have seen uh, brush pens used both ways. I don't use them often, but I will just use them as a water reservoir when I use them, or that's how I have used them. I guess would be a slightly better way to say that. Now, I should say I'm kind of cheating uh, because I don't want to paint in into all of this stuff. <laughs> uh, that's why I've chosen to paint my to paint my my background, my water going this direction rather than the other direction. I want to get around to that thing. About like that. That can all come out. Yada, yada, yada. A little bit of that neutral, just to tone it down a little tiny bit. I don't think I need too, too much of it. Oh, I think he looks fantastic. Oh, I think he looks wonderful.
starts to drip too much. Okay. Oh, oh, oh I'm so happy with this guy. And I think, uh, I think the color of the background uh, really helps him in this instance. Let me get him in the center there. Take a look at him. Uh, yeah, I'm totally happy with the way he looks. I am, however, uh, I wish I'd have gotten some better water drops up here, but that's okay. I'm just going to give a little bit. Of a highlight on his eye. I'm not even going to do it anywhere else. I was thinking I could do a highlight up here, but I'm not sure I want to. Um, I think it's it's fine on its own. Oh, I really like him. <laughs> uh, Michael, I'm really here for how how. Precise is that what that says? I got a little emoji over that. I am with the brush point. I don't know if I am. <laughs> I really don't. But um, I try. Wow! I can't. Oh, I'm so happy with the way this guy turned out. I'm gonna sign him right here. I don't know what happened to all my old pens. There we go. Ow, I just stabbed myself. Um, oh, I'm tickled with the way he turned out. Oh, I'm so happy. I think he looks fantastic. Um, so, I'm going to give a little self-reflection here, right? Um, if I were to... I don't know. If I were to, to say, again, I probably would make this... Uh, I'd give this more color uh, more saturation down here right make this darker i think this could be a little darker not a whole lot darker down here because I, his shell is pretty light but i think we could have seen a little more uh, dark down here it might have made these couple of spots even lighter but but overall i i absolutely uh love that his shell we all know the color the shell is right it's it's this beigey, uh, ochre color. And we've got hints of that in here. Uh, but this, but the, the purple, this blue in here, the, over here, I think just adds so much to uh, the shell on this. It's fantastic. And the dark under here really makes it look like it's under his body, like it's, like it's down below and you can't see it. Some of these get a little jumbled, and I think that's okay. I don't, I totally don't have a problem with that. Uh, and then I kind of did my eye the way I like to do an eye, which is to, you know, put a ring around it and and paint around it, and then the eye kind of stands out. I did a little bit of that on my own, kind of my own style in here. Um, and if I'd have gotten a little extra water in here, there's a couple of these little dots in here that I think would have helped uh, even more but overall I think he looks fantastic and um, oh I'm pick uh, pickled I'm tickled uh, with the way he turned out um, okay so uh, next week I don't know what we're gonna do um, I'm not gonna do a whole month of amethyst color <laughs> the challenge of amethyst I'll I'll do mine on the last uh, week in February. I'll, I'll do an amethyst string. I'll put that. I'll put exactly what I'm going to do as a reference photo over in um, in the Discord server. So anybody who wants to can go and look at that. I think I'm done with sea creatures for now. Um, you know, I'm going to say that with fingers crossed because uh, I might come back based upon uh, how much I like this guy and, and the seahorse too. I really like the seahorse. Um, his eyeball is perfect. I don't know, perfect is a tough word, but I think it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, we'll have fun with it. Maybe I'll put another poll up for uh, the, the next painting. Uh, we'll see, but I want to do something that's going to be fun and 
Uh, if you guys want to see more uh, more loose stuff like this, let me get this out of the way. Um, I'm happy to delve into some of this kind of thing. You know, this is kind of more of my style. It's not super loose, uh, but it's a little looser than uh, than I normally do. I can do some of this too. This is, like I said, this is this is the big rock that I walk down to every weekend. There's a, actually a little uh, right well right here somewhere. There's a there's a bench that I can sit on and paint this. Um, but anyways, uh, more to come on that. I will keep everybody uh, informed. I apologize for the power outage. I'm glad you guys all stuck with me. Until next week, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you all have a great weekend. And we will see you back here in the studio next Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific. I almost said specific. 7 o'clock Pacific. Uh, until then, have a great time, and bye-bye.